This is section 6.3, anti-differentiation by parts. We start out with the product rule in integral form. So we have the product of two functions right here, u and v in x. So we have the derivative of u times v equals the first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. Integrating both sides with respect to x and rearranging leads to the integral equation. So let's see, how have they rearranged this? Well, they got they have u solved for right here, u dv dx, and they've minused over the integral of v du dx. So they've taken the integral of all three, but they've minused the v uh, over. Well, the integral of the derivative of uv is just uv, because we have uh, the derivative with respect to x. Now, the other ones just stay. So if you can pick the u, and you can pick the derivative, then you can just follow this formula, uv minus the derivative of v du. Now we're going to see this in action. Well, here's the integration by parts formula right here. The derivative of a function, or the antiderivative of a function and the derivative of a function equals uh, u times v minus integral of v du. Now I'm sure right now that that is about as clear as mud, so we're going to see some examples and hopefully we can make some sense of this. Uh, on integration by parts, we need to pick a u and we need to pick a dv. So then we're going to do the du, we're going to take the derivative and we have the original function. So there's really four parts to this. So you have the u and the dv, there's u and the dv. You need the u and the v, so you need u and v, and you need v and du. So you need the v and the du, so you do need all four parts. Now in this case, I want to pick the u so that if I take the derivative, eventually it would go away. This would go to zero if I kept taking the derivative. So I'm going to pick x as the u, and the derivative is going to be 1 dx, or just dx. The, the derivative, the function that I'm going to say is the derivative is a cosine of x dx. So cosine of x dx, and the antiderivative of this is the sine of x. Now I'm just going to follow this formula. So the integral of u times dv, well u is x, dv is cosine of x dx. Now that's equal to, and that's what we want to solve, it says u times v, so u times v. So it's x sine of x, it's always a minus, integral of v du. So v is sine of x, and du is just dx. Well, now I, I have an integral that I can actually solve. So the answer to this problem is x sine of x plus cosine of x plus c. Now, if I take the derivative of this function, I should get right back to the original. Now, this is the answer right here. This is the integral. But let's take the derivative and see if we get back to where we started. So first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then plus the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So minus sine of x, and then the derivative of c is zero. So the sine x is cancel, and we're right back to where we started. But keep in mind that this is the answer that we're looking for right here. In the next example, we have x squared e to the x. Uh, we need to pick a u, and we need to pick a dv. Well, we're going to let u equal x squared, because if I te kept taking the derivative of x squared, it would be 2x, then 2, then 0. So eventually, it would go away. Uh, dv is e to the x, which is good, because I, I know the antiderivative e to the x. So this, this should work out uh, real nice. So we have 2x dx is du. And v is the antiderivative e to the x, which is e to the x. So the integral of x squared e to the x equals dx u times v, so x squared e to the x. And it's always minus in the middle. The integral of v du, so the integral of v, which is e to the x, du, which is 2x. So 2x e to the x dx. Well, this really didn't solve our problem here. So 
we need to do another U substitution because I still don't know what the antiderivative of this is. So we're going to let the new U equal to 2x. We're going to let dV, that's a V, equal to e to the x dx. So the derivative here is 2 dx and uh, V equals e to the x. So now we have what is left over, which is, uh, or what, uh, from the first equation, and then minus, well, we're going to do a new uv, which is 2x e to the x. You've got to use parentheses because it's another minus in here. And we have to solve this usually using um, integration by parts. So that's what all this is about. So here's the uv minus the integral of uh, v du, so 2e to the x dx. And now I have an integral that I can actually solve. So we have x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x. And then I can pull the 2 out, and that's just going to be minus 2e to the x. And of course we have plus c. Well, I need to distribute the negative through, so we have x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x and then plus 2e to the x plus c. So there's the integral of the original. It's this right here. In example three, we're going to solve the differential equation x natural log of x, subject to the initial condition that y equals negative 1 when x equals 1. So we have dy over dx equals x natural log of x. And then we're going to multiply both sides by dx to split the differentials, and we are asked to find what y is, and we have an initial condition so that we can find the c. Well, we're going to let u, well, we got to decide what u and dv are, and I don't know what the antiderivative of natural log of x is. I know what the derivative is. The derivative is 1 over x. So I have to pick u as the natural log of x because I know that the derivative is 1 over x, dx, of course. The dv is going to be x so that the v, dx, so that the v is one-half x squared. All right, so the integral of x natural log of x dx equals u times v, which is one-half natural log of, well, we should probably put the one-half x squared in front. Let's do this. There we go. So we have 1 half x squared, natural log of x. There's u times v, u times v, minus the integral of v du. So minus the integral of v, which is 1 half x squared, du, which is times 1 over x dx, which is equal to 1 half x squared, natural log of x, minus, see one of the x's will cancel, and I can pull the 1 half out integral of, this is just x, dx. Well, I know the antiderivative of x. So we have 1 half x squared, natural log of x, minus 1 fourth x squared, and then plus c. So that's what y equals. And now we're going to use that initial condition to find out what the c is. So x is 1 when y is negative 1. So y is negative 1 equals 1 half times 1 times the natural log of 1 minus 1 fourth plus c. So negative 1 equals, see the natural log of 1 is 0, so that's all 0. So we have minus 1 fourth plus c. So c equals, if I add a fourth over, that's negative, let's see, that's negative 4 fourths. Add 1 fourth, that's negative 3 fourths. So y equals, 1 half x squared, natural log of x, minus 1 fourth x squared, minus 3 fourths. And there's the entire equation. In example four, we are solving for the unknown integral. So the integral of e to the x cosine of x, that's what we're trying to find. So we're going to let u equal e to the x, and we're going to let dv equal the cosine of x dx. So the derivative of u is e to the x dx. 
and v is going to be the sine of x. So now the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx equals u times v, so e to the x sine of x minus the integral of v du, so e to the x sine of x dx. Now I don't know what the integral is uh, for this, I don't know the answer, but we're going to use integration by parts uh, to figure that out. So we got to do integration by parts again. So we're going to let u, oh, that didn't change colors, there we go, u equals e to the x and dv equals sine of x. So du equals e to the x and now v equals uh, negative cosine of x. So now we're going to take what we, what we have and we're just going to do integration by parts on that piece right there. So this is going to remain, it's going to follow us along here. So we have e to the x sine of x, that comes with, minus, in parentheses, because it's a minus now, we've got to be careful, the, the new uv, which is negative e to the x cosine of x, and then uh, minus the integral of v du, which is negative e to the x cosine of x dx. Lots of negatives going on here. So this is e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x. And then that's actually, I can pull the negative one out, that's going to be plus uh, the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. But uh, the minus will make this plus into a negative actually. So I need to make my eraser smaller. There we go. It's actually minus. The two minuses here make a plus. The, the third minus makes a minus. So that's what the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is equal to. And of course we're right back to where we started. But that's actually a good thing, that's not a bad thing, because we can add the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx to both sides. So we're going to add integral of e to the x cosine of x dx to both sides. And now there's two of these on the left hand side, and these cancel out. So we have two integral of e to the x cosine of x dx equal to e to the x sine of x plus e to the x cosine of x and then uh, plus c. Well now we just need to divide by 2. So we have e to the x cosine of x dx equals e to the x sine of x over 2 plus e to the x cosine of x over 2 and then plus c. And of course we do have plus c over 2 but it doesn't matter if you multiply something by c or divide or whatever. c is just c. It's just that constant. So here's the answer. In example six, we're going to use a tabular integration method. And this only works when one of the functions would go to zero if you kept taking the derivative. So the derivative of, we have derivative, and actually I want to go back to black. Uh, the derivative, we're going to take uh, the derivative of x to the third. And we're going to take the integral of sine of x. So if I keep taking the derivative of this function, eventually it'll be zero. So we have 3x squared, 6x, derivative of 6x is 6, and the derivative of 6 is zero. So the tabular method works when one of the functions goes to zero as you take the derivative. Then with the other function, you take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of x. The antiderivative of neg negative cosine of x is negative sine of x. The antiderivative of negative sine of x is cosine x. And then finally, the antiderivative is sine of x. Now, with this method, you draw a diagonal. You start with the top one, and you work your way uh, bottom right. And it, you have an additional sign. The first one's always plus, and it always alternates. So you make a diagonal, and the next sign is minus. Make a diagonal. Next sign's plus. Make a diagonal and the last one is minus. So the first one's always plus, and then it alternates. So the integral of x to the third sine of x dx equals, now it's these two multiplied. So it's negative 
x to the third cosine of x. That's this diagonal. The next one's going to be positive, because a negative times a negative. 3x squared cosine of x. No, no, no. Uh, 3x squared sine of x is what I meant to write. Let's back up. Sine of x. The next diagonal is a positive. Positive 6x cosine x. And then finally, minus 6 sine of x and then plus c. So that's the antiderivative of x to the third sine x. So we would have had to done integration by parts three or four times to get this. But it's, it goes very quickly uh, when we use the tabular method. In example seven, we have antidifferentiation by parts again on just the function natural log of x. Now this is a little tricky because you don't see two functions, you just see one. So the trick is we're going to let u equal the natural log of x and we let dv equal 1 times dx. That's the kind of the hidden function there. Uh, right there that we could put a 1 in there. So the derivative of u is 1 over x and the antiderivative of 1 is just x. So if we follow the pattern here, the integral of the natural log of x dx equals u times v, which is x natural log of x minus the integral of v du, so x times 1 over x, and of course we need a dx there. Well now we've gotten it to an integral that we can actually do. This is the antiderivative of just 1 dx. So the answer is x natural log of x minus x, and then of course plus c.